The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back everybody, this is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Daryl Smith is here, he's the Chief Database Architect for EMC Global IT. EMC is a $25 billion company, or soon to be $25 billion company. Quite diverse, very demanding, uh, global. Now the Federation <laughs> plays into that. So Daryl, welcome back to theCUBE, it's good to see you again. Thank you very much, appreciate being here. So, so how has um, the business evolved? I mean, the, the Federation now is a new sort of dimension uh, of the EMC business, how has that affected you? Well, it's provided some more opportunities in terms of different technologies that are now available to us. Um, you know, basically bringing in the best of breed of the, the different parts of the company and, and putting them together to build really uh, platforms that, that allow us to fully automate uh, our entire infrastructure stack. You know, you mentioned best of breed. I, I, as an IT practitioner, now you work for a technology company. Oh, yeah. And a technology company is going to say, you're going to use our stuff, eat your own dog food or drink your own champagne, as they often yes. say. But the, the age old discussion in IT has been, do I go best of breed or integrated suite? Best of breed, I get the latest and greatest technology, I can, I can drive competitive advantage, integrated suite, I might be simplifying things a little bit. Um, is that sort of spectrum still valid? Uh, uh, or have you been able to achieve a balance between best of breed and integrated suite? We really go for the balance. So, I mean, you can buy a suite that, uh, you know, advertises that it has everything that you need and it's very simple and it's click and drag and drop and uh, you can get it all done, but what you're going to find is that suite is going to assume that you're going to do things a certain way. And there's potentially a better product or capability out there that you can integrate with that suite to really get you that final level that you need to get to. So talk a little bit about, I mean, you guys are a you know, big Oracle shop. Um, you're an expert in that field. Talk about what you've been doing with, uh, with database and database as a service. What's, what's new there? Yeah, well that's really exciting. You know, for me, the biggest part, or the biggest pain really, uh, in terms of managing databases, is getting them deployed. So it really takes efforts from storage, from systems, from backup recovery guys, from now virtual administrators, DBAs, all working with a lot of different touch points to get that product out the door. Well, what we've done is we've basically removed all of those middlemen and then replaced them with automation. Right? We didn't actually get rid of the people, they still work here. But in terms of getting the database out there, we now allow the DBA himself or herself to order that database from a web page, configure it with whatever number of CPU, memory, and storage it needs, and then literally automation will go build it for them. Right? So in the end of the day, I can have that database up and running in under an hour. So so give us, give us, drill into those metrics a little bit. What was life like beforehand when you had to get the storage guys, the systems guys, the backup guys, the database guys, the virtual guys? What was, what was, how long did it take you to deploy then? And now you're saying it's under an hour. What was it beforehand? So literally, it was a two to four week process. Um, Which actually is pretty good. Well, thanks to <laughs> thanks to virtualization, it got us out of that four month process, which we've talked about before. Um, but still, even though it's virtualized, literally, you could go spin up a VM in, you know, 15 minutes. There's still all of that process and procedure and policy, um, generating tickets, trying to get someone to work on your ticket. You know, that really takes time. So let's take a specific example of uh, policy and how you've automated that. So I think of, I think of, of, of protecting the data. Sure. Um, how does the policy get automated? What do you do? You, you set up sort of a spectrum of protection capabilities uh, and, 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 and you sort of dial it up to the one you want. I mean, it's not an infinite spectrum, I presume. I presume it's a series of buckets that you can choose from. I'm going to take that one example of you know, backup. I'm going to backup, you know, daily, weekly, yep. incremental, full. Uh, uh, sh how, do, how does a, a, an, a, an IT pro interface with the system? Is it high, medium, low? Is it, more, is it, is it specifics around the, the particular RTO, RPO? I wonder if you could take us through an example. Sure, so that's a particularly painful process, typically and has been for us for a long time, um, where backups aren't really fully in the control of the DBA. So I've got to go install an agent, 
I have to get that agent and that client associated with a particular storage uh, or a backup system uh, put into a storage pool in order to back up to a location, then go to another group, get that scheduled so that it can run you know, daily or weekly. or um, And then I've got to script the backup itself. Right, very painful, high touch process. We've automated that also. So now from the web page, one of the options is, you know, do I do a daily backup? Do I do a backup every other day? Or just do a weekly backup? Um, and I can just select that and the automation goes and does all those other things that were touch points. How does the policy get determined? Is that a, is that a, 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 a IT business liaison? Or is that the, 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 the business direct input? How do you decide? So it's all based off of the RTOs and the RPOs. Mm -hmm. So if my recovery time has got to be you know, an hour, well that's actually something even more than just a typical backup. That's going to require me to take snapshots or clones periodically through the day to get you know, larger databases into that RTO. If it's something where the RTO um, can be four hours, right, I can do a standard daily backup and give me that same recovery time even for large databases. But if it's not quite that high, maybe it's a business supporting, business critical or a test dev, and my RTOs are, are much larger, and I can go for a weekly backup or you know a, a every other day type backup. It's really up to the DBA to understand uh, what I can get based off the size of the database and the restore times. Which you know again by putting the DBA in full control of the backup and full control of the recovery, now it makes it more of a consistent backup and a consistent restore because you can manage it. Mm -hmm. Right, it's no longer create a ticket, hope that somebody starts working on it and you got to try to figure that into your RTO, the DBA is in full control. Mm -hmm. So Daryl, now you can spin these up things way, way easier. You know, yeah. If you build it, are they coming? I mean, what's, what's the impact on the business now that you can so much more easily create this infrastructure for yeah. them to execute on? Do they know? How do you communicate that? Are they seeing it? Are they spinning up more things? What's the, the, the impact to your customers? Yeah, so, so really the goal for this database as a service uh, platform that we built was to give the DBAs the control that they need. So what that's allowing us to do is respond much more quickly to the business demands. Um, take for example, it's end of quarter, and the, the database is running poorly because it doesn't have enough CPU cores. Um, in the past, that'd be, hey, that's too bad, we'll get to that when we can. Um, now the DBA can literally just go in there, add more cores, and it'll automatically be added online in minutes. Um, it's really, as far as the business is concerned, it's allowing us to, to be so much more agile that the business now believes that we can do things and we can do them quickly. And they're not looking to try to maybe source around us, work out to the cloud providers that will offer that capability. Um, so it really just allows us to compete more and better for that business than we could ever do in the past. How about, um, let's go back to the automation. So how did you automate all that stuff? That was, was could have been trivial. I mean, you've, Obviously, you had to understand and document that, but then how did you go from that, that mess to who fully automated? What tools did you use? Yeah. What was that process like? How long did it take? So, getting back to that, you know, by the suite or best of breed technologies, we used uh, VMware's vCloud Automation Center mm -hmm. as really the foundation for that IT as a service capability. So that gave us the portal, that gave us the ability to generate VMs, uh, virtual machines, very, very quickly uh, with the OS pre-installed. We then augment that with Puppet from Puppet Labs, which gives us a manifest that uh, installs the database software, configures the OS, uh, adds the additional storage, or I'm section of VCO. Um, basically, puts that machine into the final state it's supposed to be. Because Puppet Labs is a state uh, state enforcement application. Um, so I take you know best of breed technologies, vCloud Automation Center, comes with VCO, it lets us do a lot of the infrastructure provisioning and couple that with uh, Puppet to give us that full state management um, to get that done. And, and what was the sort of, that, that was a project in and of itself. How long did that take? So we had to start from scratch. So basically for us, we're looking at about a two month project to build that all out. Um, we had done a POC earlier. Um, so we, we kind of knew what we did. We kind of worked out all of the, the design criteria so you know, we went in fully designed, and we went in you know coding basically. So for us, it was about a two-month process. All of that code, all of those scripts, we've actually made available to our consulting organization. So their goal is really to go out there and be able to do that in you know six, eight weeks um, to get somebody up and running. And, and typically, 
um, this kind of a project uh, is for Greenfield, it's for new databases. Especially when it comes to the day two stuff, like adding more CPU, adding memory, or adding more storage, which is really where DBA spends most of his time, trying to get that kind of work done. Um, we're ingesting all of our pre-existing databases. Right? Thank goodness we're 86% you know, virtualized in the database space. And that works with Oracle, it works with SQL Server, it works with Postgres. We're ingesting all of those existing databases so that we can provide all that day two functionality to those databases as well. Now do you have, so how do you keep track of all this stuff? Do you have an IT service management system? Uh, how does that all work? So there's a, a change management system, right? A, a CMDB, change, man yep. change management database, which we keep in sync as things change. So if I added more CPU, immediately the CMDB would get updated. There's also um, included in this is, is our own development uh, agile process. So every little one of these pieces, all these different automations, you know, require different modules, different workflows, different blueprints, and trying to get those all to work together really requires a team effort. And to manage that team effort, you know, basically we used a scrum process within the agile framework. Um, and all of our code gets checked in and it's constantly being tested. And so, talk about the, we had Nancy Majors on just now from Brown University. She was talking about the sort of organizational tension between the DBA. Yeah, you gave a little heat to the DBAs. Sort of storage admin, yeah. So, well, I, I think, well, actually, you know, she said, I think it's perfectly reasonable what they were asking for. We just couldn't deliver it. Right. <laughs> and it's true. Well, it's true. the black box, right, that yeah. you were talking and, about. And, and, and it's true. DBAs are it's kind of persnickety about their data. You know, <laughs> it's kind of the way you want it if you're running the company. Right. You don't well, want you're responsible for that. You know, ultimately, if there's a problem, even if it's a problem with the application, everybody goes to the DBA and says, what's the problem? Right, because the DBA has a full insight into what's going on with the data, the actual data, what's going on with the data platform, as well as how's the application interacting with it. So the DBA really has the ability to manage that environment, and so you need to give him that kind of control and that kind of insight. Right? With this full automation, we can provide a single pane of glass for monitoring using VC Operations Manager. Um, so that I can see storage metrics, I can see uh, virtual uh, metrics, the, the ESX metrics, the VM, the OS, the database, I can see it all put together in one place. So let's give the DBA the ability to manage the platform that he's ultimately responsible for. Now, you mentioned before that you, 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 know, sort of you automated this process, you had all these people involved, you said you didn't get rid of the people. What'd you do with the people? Did you retrain them? Did you re redeploy them? How, how did that all go? We redefined them. Redefined them. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, so, you, uh, <laughs> you know, basically a, a, a database uh, administrator, um, his job is, is to manage that database platform. That includes doing all these installation tasks, adding data files, getting other people from other groups to do the, some of the work for them. That's very time consuming. So what we've basically done is removed all of that time consumption and it allows the DBA to focus more on being proactive. Focus more on making sure that the databases are running smoothly, working with our business units to make sure that we're providing them the level of service that they need, uh, making sure that our backups are valid, maybe even testing restores once in a while. You know, it it's allows us a lot more time to be able to improve not only the platform, the database platform, but also ourselves. And so our DBAs now are learning a lot more about networking, a lot more about virtualization, about storage, to really give them a better of an understanding of how the database works. Testing restores, that's a novel concept. Yeah. Yes, we always do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, everybody does. Yeah. Um, okay, well listen, Daryl, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I want to ask you the last question is EMC World, how do you spend your time there? You know, a lot of people, a lot of IT practitioners say, oh, I meet my peers, I talk, I exchange ideas. How do you spend your time? Are you getting dragged into customer calls? Do you have time to exchange <laughs> ideas with your peers? You're coming to the cube, it's, which is great. Yeah, so we definitely, I've definitely had a few customer meetings. Uh -huh. um, I'm here, um, and, and that's, you know, to me, that's, that's really the fun part of coming to EMC World, really getting to talk with other people, you know, about the things that really uh, energize me. But at the same time, there's a tremendous platform here to learn. Right, there's not a lot of my peers here, there's not a lot of DBAs. Right. I think as, as the years go on, we're going to see a lot more of them. Because, you know, remember, I freed myself up from having to do all this day-to-day -day stuff. I'm off learning about best ways to migrate databases from VMAX arrays. I'm learning about uh, best ways to uh, manage your data lake right, as data explodes. Mm -hmm. And so this really uh, a great learning opportunity for me to grow myself. 
Okay, and so uh, so this is sort of a, a very focused show for you, right? Obviously storage focused. And then you attend Oracle Open World, of course. That's really yep. where you, your peeps are hanging out, right? That's where my yeah. peeps are, yeah. <laughs> All right, Daryl, listen, thanks very much for, for coming back on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. You're a true IT pro, and uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE. We're live from EMC World 2014, and we'll be right back.